you know, um, one of my favorite guys in movies is actually Jason Momoa. I, I have loved him ever since Stargate Atlantis. I didn't even really like Stargate Atlantis all that much, but I just thought he was really fun in it. And of course, then, you know, he was, but where I really, really took notes to Jason Momoa was he was in a not fantastic movie. It was with Sylvester Stallone called Bullet to the Head. Yep. And he played the villain in that movie. Directed by Walter Hill. And that was the movie that I went, this is long before he was Aquaman, I said, this guy should be the new Batman. And, and, and I really felt that. I felt you you sh cut the hair, clean shave. He could, with his voice, he could be a great Bruce Wayne. Mm -hmm. I mean, just he could be a fantastic Bruce Wayne, whatever. And clearly somebody was listening because eventually he became Aquaman. Not quite Batman, whatever. But he did another movie a while ago. 2011, I believe. He did Conan the Barbarian with Slang, Stephen Lang, as uh, the big bad guy in it. And... It's not a great movie. Not, not, not a great movie. But I'll tell you what, I will stand by this. The first 10 to 15 minutes of that Conan movie were awesome. And I remember being in the theater. I was at the premiere of that movie, actually. And I was sitting in the theater. We were like three rows behind Momoa. And watching this scene, like 15 minutes in, I'm like, this is really great. It, it kind of went downhill after that. And now Jason Momoa was recently uh, you know, being interviewed. And somebody brought up the thing about Conan. And Jason Momoa doesn't pull any punches. Jason Momoa said this. Listen to this. Jason Momoa, this is coming to us from the folks at Anywhere, said, Jason Momoa isn't holding back while uh, barreling into the Conan the Barbarian criticism. Over a decade since the reboot, a film premiered in 2011, Momoa admitted that the movie, quote unquote, really sucked during an interview with GQ. <laughs> I've been a part of a lot of things that really sucked and movies uh, and movies where it's out of your hands. Momoa dished Conan the Barbarian was one of them. It's one of the best experiences I had and it was taken over and turned into a big pile of shit. <laughs> so not pulling any punches. Now, look, I am generally of the mind that, listen, if you're in a movie and you got paid to be in a movie, it's your job to rep the movie. You know, like, even if you think it sucked, maybe you don't have to lie, but don't suck. I mean, don't, don't, don't come out and say it sucked, right? It's your job to promote this movie and to be behind the movie. But this is a movie that is now a decade old. This is a movie that is long. This is a movie now where he can say whatever he wants. It's not going to hurt the movie. So as far as I'm concerned, all of his contractual obligations have been satisfied. And for him to come out and say that, I, I think it's good. Because, like, often you, you've heard me, right? I, I don't like, I certainly don't like directors bashing on directors or actors bashing on actors or, or bashing movies they have that are currently out or just coming out on home video. Because, like, listen, dude, they trusted you to be in this film. Be behind the film until it doesn't matter anymore. But at this point, it doesn't matter anymore. And I, listen, I still don't think his Conan the Barbarian movie was the worst movie. It wasn't good. It wasn't good. But it is interesting hearing him reflect back on that. Now, Rob, you hear his uh, his comments on this. What do you think about his comments, and what did you think about that Conan the Barbarian movie? Well, like you, I, w I was really disappointed. I love John Milius' Conan from 82. I love that movie. Uh, it's got great verisimilitude. It's got great casting. Um, this Conan film, I liked a lot. I mean, look at you look at that. He looks the part. You know, and, and everything production-wise... The film had a lot going for it, but it was way too led. Uh, it was weighed down by C, too much CG, not enough practical stuff in it, and it just it felt like a like a TV show. It didn't feel like the kind of it didn't have the epic gravitas that I was looking for. But you know, the question that you ask, he's no longer selling the movie, and I think you're right. When an actor takes on the role, especially in a large studio temple, part of their job is to sell the film. That's part of what you are paid to do. But when history, when you have history now, all of that gets washed away by history. Yeah, and you can agree, finally yeah. come back and say, mm -hmm. that was one of the reasons why I liked when I was doing DVD special features. I liked doing catalog titles with movies that had a history because you could see how they fit into cinema history and how they had been uh, perceived by the public. So you could make a better special edition because you had better questions you could ask the cast and the crew about the director about how do you feel about this movie now 
And and I think that he's he look, he was in an epic fantasy like Aquaman that was full of CG and all kinds of craziness. And that movie turned out wonderfully well. Yes, it did. Mm -hmm. And and it's I think he's absolutely in his right to go back and go, that movie sucked. I think people need to be able to do that. And I think that it's good for the business because then you look back and go, you know what, let's make it better. If because an actor then knows why it's not good. Mm -hmm. So they can become a better collaborator with you now. Let me tell you so, too, this is one of the most smooth guys in the world. We were at the premiere after party. Momo is a tall guy, and he accidentally bumps into Anne. Like, Anne, he bumps into Anne's back. He's just walking, right? She turns around. Like, she wasn't angry. She, she turned around to see what it was. And there's Jason Momo looking down, and he puts his hand on the show. He goes, I'm so sorry. Then he moves on, <laughs> and Anne is just like, because he he's a good looking dude. Next day, I'm doing the, the junket interview with Jason Momo, and the video is still up online. You can probably go find this. And I brought Anne along with me. So she's in the room. I'm sitting down with Jason Momoa. We're just getting ready for the cameras to roll. So they roll cameras. And I go, Jason. My first line is Jason. And he looks at me and goes, John. And as soon as he says my name that way, you, you can audibly hear Anne in the background going, huh. <laughs> <laughs> so just, just, just a, a little something there. Anyway, Chris, you hear, you hear about Jason Momoa's uh, comments what here. Uh, what, what do you think about it? I love this. I love when actors go back and go, yeah, that was not my best. That was not great. I mean, look at how Ryan Reynolds has made a whole career out of being like, oh, remember that Green Lantern film? Woof. So I, I'm really happy to see this hindsight. Juliette Lewis actually did this interview in The Hollywood Reporter recently where she talks about how people who don't have regrets have to be narcissists. <laughs> and I feel like if you see some work of yours that you can objectively say is not good, I think that's great. I think that shows that you're a humble person. I am wrapped up in you thinking that he should be Bruce Wayne. I mean, he's a great actor, but that golden retriever energy, my man, he's made for being Aquaman. Uh, I mean, hey, listen, I, hey, there was no mistake. Yeah. No mistake that they, they knew what they were Aquaman doing there. So I, yeah, I'm totally good with it. And mm -hmm. you know what I love about his comments too? Was it, yes, in the movie shit, but he said, it was one of my best experiences. Yeah. Well, right. I said, like, you say, I loved making this movie, well, and that's which the way is to always do good it. to hear. Exactly. And I think that that happens a lot because he talks about interference. You know, people stepped in and changed the movie, which I can't stand because you've got people that second guess what they've done and they, not the, not, it was Marcus Nispel who directed it, right? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't remember. And, and, I hate that. I hate when there's there's interference. We see a lot of that. And that, with these large movies that have a lot riding on them, I can understand. But second-guessing these kinds of epic tentpole movies <laughs> never goes well. Uh, well, well, for all we know, the movie was five times worse before they did. I Maybe. mean, we, we just don't know. Yeah, like, we, we just don't true. know. That's true. I mean, so it that can happen. Worse. Anyway, guys, question is for you. What do you think about this? Did you see Jason Momoa's Conan movie? And not a ton of people did. Made like $67 million worldwide on a $90 million budget. Not a lot of you did, but if you did, what did you think of it? Do you think it's as bad as Jason is saying it is? Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and leave your thoughts there. Guys, we want to take a second and thank the sponsor of this video, Helix Sleep. Guys, let me tell you, just a couple of days ago, Ann and I received our Helix mattress and it is the best mattress we have ever slept on in our entire lives. We had like this $3,000 specialized mattress that we got like five, six years ago and we liked it very much, but this one completely outdoes it. It's night and day. And you can get matched with your perfect mattress too. See, Helix Sleep has a quiz that takes just like a minute to complete and it matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. Why would you buy a mattress made for somebody else? With Helix, you're getting a mattress that you know will be perfect for the way that you sleep. I hopped online, took the Helix quiz, and Anna and I were matched with the perfect mattress for us. And it is so easy to set up. Simply take it out of the box, get it positioned on your mattress, take off the plastic, and then give it an hour or two to breathe to reach its full size, and you will not believe how comfortable this thing is. All you got to do is go to helixsleep.com slash campia take their 60 second sleep quiz and they'll match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life and it's risk-free they have a 10-year warranty and you get to try it out for a hundred nights they'll even pick it up for you if you don't love it but you will helix even has financing options and flexible payment plans so a great night's sleep is never far away and here's the best part helix is offering up to 200 dollars off of all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helix helixsleep.com slash campia. 